And I just did a calculation this morning. You are the first one to hear that, that the object will come closest. December 2025. Scientists just proposed a new explanation for three eye atlas, cryovolcanism, ice volcanoes, cold eruptions shooting frozen gas and water vapor into space instead of lava. It's a neat theory. It explains the jets, the spiral patterns in the coma, the outgassing behavior. One problem, it doesn't explain the 14 documented anomalies that don't fit any natural comet model the heartbeat pulse in brightness, the non-gravitational acceleration that requires more thrust than the visible mass loss provides, the Jupiter Hill radius intercept with odds approaching zero, and the anti-tail that shouldn't survive solar wind pressure. The cryovolcanism theory addresses the visual appearance while ignoring the physics problems. Subscribe because what's happening with 3i Atlas goes beyond ice eruptions. The data keeps contradicting natural explanations, and the gap between what we're seeing and what's being officially acknowledged is getting harder to ignore. First, let's understand the theory. Cryovolcanism. Cold volcanism. Instead of molten rock, magma, and lava, you get eruptions of frozen volatiles. Water vapor, methane, ammonia, nitrogen ice, slushy mixtures of gas and particles. We've seen this in our solar system. Enceladus, Saturn's moon, shoots water geysers from its south pole. Pluto has nitrogen ice flows. Triton has active plumes of nitrogen gas. These are real phenomena, well-documented, understood. The theory being proposed for 3i Atlas suggests it's behaving like one of these icy bodies. As it heated up approaching the sun, subsurface volatiles warmed, built pressure, and erupted through surface vents. The spiral patterns in the coma, gas jets rotating with the nucleus as it spins, the brightness variations, active regions coming in and out of sunlight. It fits the visual data. The images show structures that look like plumes, collimated jets, organized patterns. And here's the compelling part. Spectroscopic analysis suggests 3i Atlas has a composition similar to carbonaceous chondrites, primitive meteorites found in Antarctica that are rich in metals and frozen gases. So the theory connects the dots. An icy body from another star system, made of similar materials to objects in the outer reaches of our own solar system, erupting cold volatiles as it passes through the inner solar system. Natural. Explainable. Safe. And on the surface, the cryovolcanism explanation makes sense. If other solar systems form icy bodies the way ours does, and physics should work the same way everywhere, then interstellar visitors should resemble our own trans-Neptunian objects. Cold, metal-rich, volatile-laden, capable of erupting when heated. The match with carbonaceous chondrites from Antarctica adds credibility. These are among the most primitive materials in our solar system, unchanged since the solar system formed 4.6 billion years ago. If 3i Atlas reflects light the same way these meteorites do, it suggests similar composition. Similar formation, similar conditions, which would mean the building blocks of planetary systems are universal. The same chemistry, the same physics, just arranged differently around different stars. That's a significant finding on its own. It means our solar system isn't unique. The processes that created Earth, Jupiter, Saturn's moons, Pluto, those same processes happened elsewhere, and we're watching evidence of that float through our neighborhood. So the cryovolcanism theory isn't wrong. It's incomplete. Now let's talk about what the theory ignores. 14 documented anomalies. Behaviors that don't fit standard comet physics, even if you account for cryovolcanism. First, the brightness pulse. 3i Atlas shows a periodic variation in brightness every 16 hours, matching its rotation period, but the variation is too strong to come from the nucleus alone. The nucleus is tiny compared to the coma. A small rotating body shouldn't modulate the brightness of a massive diffuse cloud, unless the coma is somehow coupled to the rotation, which requires either gravity strong enough to drag gas along, unlikely for a small comet, or some other mechanism keeping the outgassing synchronized. Cryovolcanism doesn't address this. Active vents on a rotating surface would create flickering, not a steady pulse. Second, the anti-tail, the million-kilometer jet pointing toward the sun. We've covered this extensively. 
Solar wind at 3i Atlas's location moves at 400 kilometers per second. Thermal outgassing moves at 400 meters per second. For material to penetrate that wind and maintain structure over a million kilometers requires either extremely heavy particles, which should fall apart into a dispersed cloud, or exhaust velocities far higher than thermal gas can produce. Cryovolcanism uses the same physics as regular cometary outgassing, just colder volatiles. Same velocity problem, the antitail shouldn't exist under cryovolcanic activity any more than it should under regular cometary activity. Third, non-gravitational acceleration. 3i Atlas accelerated measurably around perihelion. For a comet, that acceleration comes from outgassing thrust. Newton's third law, eject mass in one direction, move in the other, but the amount of acceleration observed requires ejecting more mass than the tails account for. Cryovolcanism doesn't solve this. Cold gas has the same momentum problem as warm gas. You need high velocity exhaust to generate significant thrust, unless there's an invisible high speed jet we're not detecting. Which brings us back to the same question. Where's the thrust coming from? Fourth, the Jupiter trajectory. This is the big one. 3i Atlas is headed toward Jupiter's hill radius, the gravitational boundary where Jupiter's influence dominates over the suns. The precision of this intercept is statistically improbable, not impossible, but unlikely enough to warrant attention. Cryovolcanism doesn't address trajectory. That's orbital mechanics. And the orbital mechanics don't care if the object is erupting ice or lava. The trajectory either happened by chance, a cosmic coincidence, or it didn't. Here's what's frustrating about the cryovolcanism theory. It's not that it's wrong, it's that it only addresses the easy parts. Yes, 3i Atlas has jets. Yes, they look like cryovolcanic plumes. Yes, the composition might match primitive icy bodies. But when you bring up the anti-tail physics problem, the theory goes quiet. When you mention the brightness pulse that doesn't fit, rotation of a small nucleus, no response. When you point out the non-gravitational acceleration that exceeds what the visible mass loss should produce, the theory doesn't engage. This is the pattern we've seen throughout the 3i Atlas story. Official explanations address the visuals while sidestepping the physics. NASA's press conference focused on images. Beautiful captures from Hubble, JWST, amateur observers. Descriptions of the coma, the tail, the brightness, but no deep dive into why the anti-tail maintains coherence. No explanation for the pulse, no acknowledgement of the trajectory precision, just comets are complex and variable. Now the cryovolcanism theory does the same thing. It explains what we see, jets and patterns, without confronting what we measure, thrust, acceleration, structure stability. But let's give the theory credit where it's due. The compositional match with carbonaceous chondrites is interesting. These meteorites contain metals, iron, nickel, rare earth elements. If 3i Atlas has similar composition, that could explain the heavy particles required for the anti-tail. Dense grains resist solar radiation pressure better than fine dust, so maybe the anti-tail is made of metallic particles ejected by cryovolcanic activity, heavy enough to penetrate solar wind, reflective enough to be visible. That's a plausible hybrid. Cryovolcanism providing the ejection mechanism, metallic composition providing the particle mass, but it still doesn't solve the columnation problem. Why is the anti-tail so narrow? Why doesn't it spread into a fan as particles of different sizes get sorted by radiation pressure? Unless the particle size distribution is remarkably uniform. Which brings us back to the same question that keeps appearing. Why is everything about 3i Atlas so organized? Natural processes create chaos. Size distributions, velocity distributions, directional scatter, 3i Atlas shows order. Narrow jets, stable pulses, Precise trajectories. Cryovolcanism might be part of the answer, but it's not the complete answer. Now, if the cryovolcanism theory is correct, even partially, that's still significant. We'd be watching the first confirmed interstellar cryovolcano, an icy body from another star system actively erupting as it passes through ours. That tells us something about planetary system formation. Cold, volatile-rich bodies form around other stars. Cryovolcanism happens elsewhere. The outer reaches of other solar systems look like ours. Universal chemistry, universal physics. And we're sampling it directly, 
every molecule we detect in 3i Atlas's coma is a data point about conditions in another protoplanetary disk billions of years ago. That's valuable science regardless of whether the object is natural or artificial, but here's the tension. The more we study 3i Atlas, the less it looks like any comet we've documented before. Yes, it has ice. Yes, it outgasses. Yes, it has a coma and tail. But the details don't fit. The pulse, the acceleration, the anti-tail, the trajectory. Each anomaly might have a natural explanation. Maybe. But when you stack 14 anomalies together, the probability of all of them being coincidental, natural variations drops. At some point you have to ask, are we forcing the data to fit a natural model because that's more comfortable than considering alternatives? So here's where we are. One camp says, cryovolcanism, natural icy body, unusual but explainable. Another camp says, too many anomalies. Physics doesn't close. Consider non-natural explanations. Both camps are looking at the same data, same images, same measurements, same spectroscopy, different conclusions. The cryovolcanism camp focuses on what fits, the visual similarities to known cryovolcanic bodies, the compositional match with primitive meteorites, the plume-like structures. The anomaly camp focuses on what doesn't fit, the anti-tail physics, the pulse mechanism, the trajectory precision, the thrust problem, and NASA? NASA seems to be avoiding the conversation entirely. Press conferences that emphasize pretty pictures. Statements that call 3i Atlas interesting without addressing why it's interesting. No deep technical briefings on the physics problems. No public debate between researchers with different interpretations. Just, we're monitoring it. Here's the possibility that keeps getting ignored. Maybe both theories are partially correct. Maybe 3i Atlas is a cryovolcanic body, but one that's been modified, or one that formed under conditions we don't have in our solar system. Maybe it's carrying materials we don't recognize because the stellar environment it came from had different elemental abundances. Maybe the cryovolcanic activity is being channeled or controlled by internal structures we can't see, magnetic fields organizing charged particles, subsurface voids directing gas flow, density gradients creating preferential ejection, natural but unusual, explainable but unprecedented, or maybe it's not natural at all. Maybe the cryovolcanic appearance is surface activity on something with an engineered interior. We don't know. That's the honest answer. We don't know. What we do know is that the cryovolcanism theory explains some observations while ignoring others, and that's not good enough for an object this significant. So where does that leave us? 3i Atlas is either the first interstellar cryovolcano we've observed, a natural icy body erupting cold volatiles as it passes through our solar system, or it's something more complex that happens to look like a cryovolcano while also displaying behaviors that don't fit that model. The December 19th close approach is coming. Better data, sharper images, more spectroscopy. If the cryovolcanism theory is complete, the anomalies should resolve. The anti-tail should widen and disperse. The pulse should become irregular. The thrust should match the visible mass loss. If the anomalies persist, if the anti-tail stays coherent, if the pulse remains steady, if the trajectory hits the hill radius despite NASA's revised predictions, then the cryovolcanism theory needs revision. Not abandonment, revision. Because right now, it's explaining the appearance while avoiding the physics. And physics doesn't compromise. Subscribe and follow because the next few weeks will either validate the cryovolcanism model or expose its limitations. And either way, we're watching an interstellar visitor that's challenging our understanding of what comets can be. Whether it's a frozen volcano from another star or something stranger, 3i Atlas isn't done surprising us. The mystery continues, the data keeps coming, and the gap between official explanations and observable reality remains. Stay curious. Question everything, and don't assume the safe theory is the complete theory.